If you're looking for what I consider to be an exemplar of the university's mission, I don't think you can find a better, more inspiring story than the story of ICI. For 30 years, the University of Minnesota's Institute on Community Integration has advanced the ideal of full inclusion for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. At a time when most universities had a medical orientation toward disability, ICI's focus was informed by the civil rights and disability rights movements. This direction attracted many energetic, creative people who were and remain committed to making the world a better place for all people. It has the synergy of many, many researchers who have different skills and expertise, all looking at the, the question of how do we help support people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to have the best lives they possibly can. That, along with a pretty infectious mission, um, has, has uh, really allowed this place to develop a cadre of truly exceptional uh, young people who grow into maturity uh, working in this center. The Institute on Community Integration is, without a doubt, the most successful center in the College of Education and Human Development. ICI is a place where research, education, and a commitment to the public good come together. Work is conducted across five primary areas of focus. Early intervention, transition, educational systems improvement, educational assessment and intervention, and community living. ICI, in a lot of ways, to me, is the best example of the U's commitment to its land-grant mission, to trying to be totally integrated with where the community is going and, and how the community sees to get there. It's easy to come to work when you know that the work that you're doing is in support of the best way of supporting individuals with disabilities. It's easy to come to work when the job is interesting and when there are opportunities to collaborate both within Minnesota and with researchers all over the world. Lots of fabulous resources and information and ideas and research that we draw on in Australia from ICI. But equally, uh, there are things that we've done in Australia that uh, we've taken that have become part of the program at ICI as research projects or whatever. And so you know, we learn from one another. As we do some of the international work, for example, in Russia, in India, and in Costa Rica, we learn so much from the system. Today I'm here working, uh, helping with uh, direct calls, help helping with CDS um, and other projects. Uh, as you know, it's not just one string. At ICI, you, get, you work on different projects at the same time. We're helping the backyard staff understand what they need to do to provide a better quality of life and to get a good education. What we do at, at the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals is use a lot of ICI's research materials and we interpret that so it's relatable and understandable to direct support professionals. And we speak with tens of thousands of direct support professionals each year. We know that if we don't have uh, the ability to support people who are providing the support, the whole thing falls apart. And ICI's contributions in understanding that holistic picture um, have been tremendous and unparalleled in the field. The role that ICI has played in uh, making sure that data was valid and reliable uh, and was produced in a way that was accessible to the public. Um, it's, it's been extraordinary uh, and it's an incredible contribution. And while they may be most well known for their research, it's the practical applications that are really of value. One of the things that I've always appreciated about ICI were the materials related to community inclusion, especially through things like impact. I think what the university does, which is so critically important to the community, is helping to translate this research into knowledge and information so that we can actually use it. 
It's hard for me to think of an issue that matters nationally that ICI hasn't shown a leadership role and really been on the cutting edge of and really helping to lift up issues um, that the rest of the country is not paying enough attention to. Thirty years ago, the world was very different. Um, institutions were still the primary service for people with intellectual disabilities. People with disabilities were not necessarily at the table. Or if they were, it was in the context of an advocacy organization. The world was mostly comprised of what were called then university-affiliated programs that were located in institutional settings or in medical school settings. And here we had a group of young Turks who were sitting around the table and trying to envision a different future. I grew up with an older brother with a significant intellectual and developmental disability. It's through that lens that I begin to see the positive elements of change. One of the biggest keys to ICI's work over the last 30 years and the growth of our work and the building of a very strong national reputation is that central to all of our work is partnership. What you get, I think, from ICI is bringing together uh, perspectives from many different arenas and disciplines and people with disabilities and family members and policymakers to look at what does community inclusion mean as a whole. If people with IDD are going to truly be part of the community and have the same opportunities as people without disabilities, you can't just focus on one area. We have to teach society that just because we have an adaptive way of being successful doesn't mean we can't be successful. It just means we have a different approach to succeeding. You guys were always trying to find a way to help ordinary families understand the choices that were in front of us. And that makes all the difference. And producing many different things that help people with disabilities get the resources and tools that they need to help our movement grow stronger. The work that ICI has done to bring to light, the people who have been left behind still, is so important in shaping our civil rights agenda. I just think about all the things that I dreamed about three years ago. We dreamed about three years ago. Finally coming true. People, people are living in the community, working in the community, self advocacy is getting stronger and it's getting younger. ICI matters to me because it makes a difference for people with developmental disabilities and other kinds of disabilities. Working with ICI and, and uh, getting information from them, and they're loaded with information that we often need and can rely on. I remember being in the disability policy and services class and, and being taught by David Johnson and Amy Hewitt. And I remember uh, thinking at one time, hey, I want this job. I want to work where they work, doing the kind of research and the kind of work they do. And now here I am doing the work that I was sitting there uh, reading and researching. Um, that's a good feeling. That's a good feeling. One of the things I that appealed to me coming here was sort of the combination of doing research and training and working in the community and making an impact, doing challenging work. I have a passion for, uh, for advocating about employment for people who are disabilities. I've always wanted to present beautiful places, but I never found the opportunity. I would just like to see people's attitudes continue to evolve so that when you tell someone that you work, they don't act as if that's the most amazing thing that they've ever heard. ICI has developed a DNA which constantly reinvents itself in very creative ways. It's a different organization than it was when we founded it. 
Um, there are people who get up every day trying to think about the next best idea. We have just an excellent group of highly committed, highly diverse staff at ICI that bring different perspectives to our work and I think that's a big secret to uh, the quality and the output of our work. Check and Connect started in 1990 with a federally funded grant and it was a project with Minneapolis Public Schools to provide a mentor relationship with youth uh, with disabilities at the time and to help those students have someone who checked in with them on a regular basis and connected them to the services that they need. National Center on Educational Outcomes works pretty much at a policy level to make sure that we don't forget about students with disabilities, English learners, English language learners with disabilities. I think that we do a lot to really link instruction and assessment and to me that feels like we're having a really big impact on education as a whole. This is not an add-on for education, this is actually uh, something that will pay off in the long run. Transition is so important, especially with children with disabilities. It's important for everybody, but for children with disabilities, it's critical. And the earlier they get involved in that kind of thing, even as young as 14, used to be in some cases, but at least 16, they can get a start on thinking about that. There is a lot of work that we've done in transition through the years in disability that carried over into helping develop the skills of American Indian students to work on preparation for life after high school. ICI has helped individuals know who they are and you know their important place in the community. 30 years ago we would not have imagined that we were having conversations about people with IDD going to college and making the kinds of contributions that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities are making. We live in a world today where people with developmental disabilities are runway models and stars on sitcoms and restaurant owners and owners of other businesses. People with developmental disabilities are known and contributing and valued members of our community in a way that they haven't been. And as a parent, that's what I want for my son. I want for us all to help him discover what his gifts are and help him find ways to contribute those gifts to the people around him. And our community, our whole community is better for that, not just him. It takes persistence and it takes uh, continued energy and recommitment to keep something going, uh, especially an ideal that's very complex to implement in a changing world. Keeping clear on a mission over 30 years has probably been as instrumental as anything to furthering the work we do. There is not a person in ICI that is not clear on what this place is about. Collaborative research, innovative training and information sharing, and talented, committed staff have kept ICI in the forefront of the disabilities movement for three decades, ensuring that children, youth, and adults with disabilities are valued by and contribute to their communities of choice. Continual advances in community services and supports, person-centered approaches, and the growth of organized advocacy by and for people with disabilities have taken us a long way. But innovation, collaboration, and most importantly, vigilance to the needs of people with disabilities will be needed to influence positive change over the next 30 years. I think we have come a long way and we got a long way to go.